Hey, good afternoon, good morning. Welcome to the Gateless Live webinar. Dave Lopshire here with the Guarantee Great Companies, and we're very excited that you have chosen to join us again. This is our uh, third in a series of live webinars where we are featuring the top agents from across the country talking about how we do business and how to, you can use some of the things that they've done in their long careers to get where they are and put those into practice into your business and how you can help grow your real estate career. So we're excited today to have Julie Vanderblue with us. Now, Julie is the CEO of the Vanderblue team, and uh, she's also the president of the Higgins Group, which is a Christie's affiliate in uh, the Connecticut area. And Julie, I love this tagline, the Connecticut real estate redefined. So welcome to uh, Gateless Live, we're glad you're here. Thanks so much, it's an honor to be here. I'm excited to uh, get started. All right, cool. So let's get into some numbers. Uh, you're top one of uh, one percent in the nation, and the reason that you got there is 150 million in annual sales. And so, um, for those that don't know the Connecticut market very much, what are we talking as far, uh, about as far as numbers go? What are we talking about as far as uh, you know average home sales? What kind of business are you in? Kind of give me a little overview of uh, of your approach to business in owning the Connecticut market. Okay, um, so Connecticut has a very diverse market. We've got Fairfield County, we've got Greenwich all the way to Bridgeport. So what, what I think makes our team unique is we've got $20 million properties and $150,000 condos. So really we um, cater to every need um, from the high, high-end luxury to, um, to rentals, to high-end rentals, to condos. So. The, out, it's a, the statistics are a little misleading. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're a Greenwich agent, 150 million is, uh, and that's all you're focusing on. You know, there's 25 million dollar property, so right. you don't have to sell too much to get there. But when you're covering such a vast uh, territory with a with a team that covers so much, um, we did about 140 transactions last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, probably more than that. I should know that statistic in my head, but uh, <laughs> 50 million. Right. Let, um, but it's it's a very diverse market, and what I think makes our team unique is I remember when I first got in the business, um, I I rose to the top pretty quickly. Um, this was 20 years ago, and uh, there wasn't a lot of creative marketing going on. Right. So um, my background's marketing. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I had a couple businesses before, one in college and and one after. So I brought a, a new element of creativity to the industry when I came. So rising that quickly, I'd like to think is because I'm so brilliant. But the bar was kind of low back then. Um, so I remember um, being one of the top producers at top agency uh, my like second or third year, and uh, a renter came in young couple and I was already the top producer at this company and they mm -hmm. were treated very poorly when they first walked in by the they were just like you could see the the uh, duty desk agent rolling their eyes like oh well you should check Craigslist and she, I, they, she just basically handed her some MLS sheets and basically said she didn't really want to work with them so I said do you mind if I take them and I and she was shocked she's like do you Julie you have time for this and I took them into the office um, and I vowed to myself that day that no matter how successful I became, I would never let money get in the way of the way I treat the, the, the if it was a $10 million buyer versus a $150,000 buyer, they should get the same experience, maybe a different level of marketing expense. And obviously you can't spend the same dollars for those clients, but as far as consumer centricity and, and and treating them the same, um, that's what I've always believed. Um, so when I, when I, the, the diversity, that's my point, is we cover from Bridgeport to Greenwich with the same dedication to excellence. And you know, one of the things I love about where you are is that those, those you know, properties that are inland on the bays, they're so beautiful, those big grandiose homes and you know, all the historical properties that are there. But, you know, to your point, you can, uh, you know, drive around uh, uh, two corners and see this beautiful condo community. It's just such a really cool marketplace. Really like that. 
but you guys probably heard why Julie is on here today because she is the master marketer and I want to get into that. So the, the thing uh, that we talked about when we brought Julie in is we're going to talk about uh, making uh, marketing, uh, using that to stand out above everybody else. And that's what you've become so good about. Um, so one of the things that we talked about um, with your really uh, different approach to your marketplace is the fact that you do a, a really, really in-depth analysis for every client, whether they're on the buy side, sell side. Let's get into the, what you call the SWOT analysis. Okay, yes, the SWOT analysis is, you know, uh, that's a, a common term in, in marketing and um, in business, and I didn't see a lot of it going on when I first entered the, uh, the industry. Um, so when I was sell I got into this because my husband's a builder, um, I was in marketing, worked for Gannett, I was a business strategist, mm -hmm. and I did not see any creativity uh, or, or um, strategic approach to the, to the marketing or lack of marketing that was being done um, for his properties. So my original goal was just to get my license, sell his properties at a higher level, and, um, and what happened, happened quickly because um, you know I, I looked at the target markets and and the strengths of the home and the weaknesses of the home and the opportunities it could bring to the buyers and which buyers would would appreciate those opportunities and how to sell the opportunities and how to overcome the weaknesses um, and we did that through a very unique um, marketing platform and and magazine style uh, marketing tool Mm -hmm. um, and within probably eight months, I had more listings than I, I, I got rid of my other job and I, I dove in full force and um, became really passionate about it as far as looking at it with a more strategic approach, which I don't think most realtors are being taught um, to have that strategic advantage over um, the competitors because they're all focusing on the transaction right. versus the relationship of um, and bringing more value versus getting the sale done. It, so. so we talk about all the time, we talk about this all the time. If you're transactional, it's no way to sustain a career. If you're relational, that's what your career is focused on, right? I mean, that's that's the most important thing that uh, we, we talk to the salespeople about all the time. If, you're, if people don't trust you, they won't do business with you. I love the example where you took that person who was being sloughed off, so to speak, and said, here, let me come in and talk to you about that. That's instant trust. That's what people are looking for, right? Exactly. And the just on a side note, that led to three very substantial deals down the road. And I didn't do it to gain, but I'm a big believer in when you give, it comes back to you tenfold. And mm -hmm. I give my teammates, every member of the team when they join gets a copy of The Go-Giver. Highly recommend it to anybody. It's a small book, but it's a great book. Um, and it's uh, whenever I get caught up and stressed out about the crazy, I read it again, and it kind of grounds me. Highly recommend it. Yeah, that's a great that's a great read. And you're right; it's really small. It won't take you long at all to get through it. It's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome read. By the way, if as we're going through stuff, I know you guys are probably going to have some questions. So use the questions box on the GoToWebinar and uh, type your questions in there. If we don't get to them during this time that uh, we have Julie uh, live, we will get you answers to those questions. She's uh, very graciously agreed to, to make sure we get everything covered. So if you guys have a questions, uh, uh, don't be afraid to use that questions box on the GoToWebinar panel. So one of the other things that you were talking about, and I love this magazine style. So let's get into that. I mean, that's a unique approach. Everybody, you know, with the Zillows and the Trulias and all this online stuff. Now, you're still using the, the feature of the magazine, right? Yes. I mean, it's in print. It's also online. It's the online magazine where you can turn the page and you hear the sound of the noise, the page turner. Um, but it's, it's a lifestyle publication. Um, and it's got the little booklet in the front, the caption in the front that says what's inside, and it's got top 10 reasons, top 10 things you'll miss, will miss about living here, the features, the, foot, uh, the photograph journey, it's got the story of the home, it's got an interview with the owner, it's got um, uh, Neighbors Know Best, which I, which I did learn from Alan Dalton, um, 
uh, so that's about the neighbors. So we include the neighbors into, we interview the neighbors about what they love with rates and reviews being so important. Everybody wants to know what others think. So just getting a few testimonials from the neighbors really makes a difference. We've got higher end properties in there that what's happening in the neighborhood is, is properties that are not necessarily comps, but properties that are higher value. So we show the clients that are looking that don't know that area um, that they're not the most expensive house in the neighborhood. Um, then we have the uh, just the area features. So we've got a map with 10 to 20 um, bullet points of where the schools are from the house and where how far the train is and the beach and the so it's really a cohesive informational piece versus just a buy this house piece. Exactly, and it you know I'm sure you you know employ the photographers to do it right and make sure that the the images are awesome, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, photography and video is the most important thing, right? You know, it, it's without it, it, it shocks me quite frankly if anybody doesn't have a photographer they should get one um you see some of these photos where you can see the the car the car mirror in the picture because they're still in the car taking the front shot so if, if one piece of advice just you know make sure pretend it, i always say this pretend it's your house what when i'm talking to my yeah this is not a good tool to do listings right well, not, I use my phone because there's lifestyle, I mean, there's also lifestyle video that we do all the time, that we do snippets of the house. Just about every open house, I'll do a quick live Facebook post. I'll save it, and then we'll post it later, bringing people in. We love to get the owners in. Hi, we're just heading out. And it's just, it Hi. makes it real, it makes it fun, it makes people watch. Well, that's what I was going to get into next, is we'll, we'll talk about social media in a, big, in, in a moment, because that's big. But you also mentioned video. And now I will change my tune because this is an awesome tool for when it comes to, to short snips of video. And by the way, don't shoot like this, shoot like this. But anyway, you know, how are you using video? What are you doing with it in addition to what the things that you just mentioned? Um, well, video is, I, I, I have a lifestyle uh, social media guru who I hired recently actually. And um, video is, you know, not just walking through the house, I mean, we have the, the professional photographers that do the video tour, which is really obviously important. Um, mm -hmm. But then we've got the small snippets, uh, almost like teasers of just, you know, 30 seconds of a, of, a, of a snippet. And then we've got interviews with, you know, we can get into the whole community. I think being part of the community is one of the, one of the ways I rose to success so quickly and being really entrenched in the community and helping support the local businesses, having video of, oh, we love Fairfield and going to the local Las Vegas is my favorite coffee shop and we take video down there and we'll just put that in our blog as, as for coffee. So it's not just about the homes, it's about the lifestyle because homes are not only competing with neighborhoods anymore, they're competing with the whole town. More importantly, they're competing, competing with other towns mm -hmm. and even now they're competing with states. We're losing people to other states. So you've got to get them to fall in love with the lifestyle that we bring. And the best way to do that is through video. Got it. I love that approach. And so I want to drill down into that a little bit because, you know, we here in Illinois as well have a lot of people are moving out. But uh, like you, we have a lot of people that are being transferred here. Or a lot of people who want to, you know, especially in Connecticut with the beautiful recreation that you guys have there. You have a lot of people that are transitioning from, you know, other places. So you know there's but you also have people that are moving up so there's got to be different approaches to the marketing right how do you how do you distinguish those different things yeah i mean it's just more and more videos and target marketing and staying ahead of the continuously doing more uh more videos video on my website if you went to town profiles there's a company called town advisor also started by alan, alan dalton actually um and it's nine minute documentaries nine minutes and a lot of the agents really didn't thought oh it's too long it's too long and i i embraced it because i'm going to use it appropriately i'm mm -hmm. not going to ha i'm going to use it and i'm not going to facebook this watch this because nobody's going to watch a nine minute video but if i meet someone at an open house i can say and they're moving here from westchester or from california or wherever and they're trying to figure out what where to where to live instead of trying to convince them to buy my house I want to earn 
their trust. Yes. So we're talking about Fairfield and we're talking about other areas. So if you go to my web and I'll say, you know, I'd love for you to go to my website and take a look at town profiles. The videos are long. Um, I don't say that to them. I mean, I do say, you know, take the time to watch the videos because if you're making a change, a lifestyle change of this magnitude, honestly, nine minutes is not very long. I mean, people, it's, it's it, so it really baffled me that so many people didn't understand that it was to be used in a certain way. And it, they're very educational. And, um, and so we always have them and I use them frequently when appropriate, but the small little teaser ones are the ones um, that really, like if we're targeting, we have a, you know, a very big aging population. So first floor master bedrooms are big, in-law apartments are big. We're networked with, you know, every single senior housing company um, locally that we network with. We have a senior division. So we really help people through that transition. And that's going to be a specific video to help people understand that. So um, being short and to the point in those videos to capture their attention and then having the longer ones to be more educational. You know, and I got to be transparent because when you said nine minute documentary, I thought, oh my gosh, I'll never be able to do that. But, but that's because I have a sales brain, right? You have a sales brain. We're, we're wired to be going, 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 going. I got to move on to the next task. But you think about, to your point, the person buying the home, that's a time investment well worth it. I think this is, so those of you out there who just cringed at a nine minute video, stop it. Think about yeah. it. And look and think through that, right? I mean, I'm not going to put a nine minute video up on Facebook. No. Somebody, I'm going to invite them. I'm going to send them the link or I'll send them to my site. And it's a reason to go to my site. So why would someone come to my site to look at houses? Nobody wants to go to a real estate site to look at houses. There's way too many options. Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, you name it. And I love when people do come to my site, but if I expect them to switch where they're looking, to come to my site to look for homes, I'm fooling myself. But if I have a reason for them to go, and I do, I have something called Exclusive Sneak Preview Division, um, which many people think of as you know, pocket listings, which right. is not at all what this is. Um, and uh, I mean, I can get into that now too, if you like. I was going to ask you about that. I was going to ask you about that because, you know, I love being controversial. I love pushing the envelope a little bit because that's what we do here at the Guaranteed Rate Companies. We push the envelope because we want to do, we want to break the mold and keep going forward. And by the way, thanks for wearing Guaranteed Rate uh, Red there today. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you have a division, and I love this. It's the exclusive sneak preview division, ESPdivision.com. All right. What is it? And what are you doing with it? All right, so I'll, I'll explain a little bit how it started. I, um, my husband's a builder, as I mentioned, and we were living in a beautiful new construction home. Um, so I had no complaints about where I was living. I was riding my bicycle, was not in the market, and I drove about, I drove down my favorite street, and there was a for sale by owner sign, and it was a dilapidated old home. I got off my bike. And I'm not bold at all to pull a sign out of the ground, walk up to the house. I'm hiding behind it saying, you know, what's it going to cost me for you to put this in your garage? Because I want your house. I gave her asking price, overpaid, waived everything. My husband's a builder, so I didn't worry about inspection. I waived my mortgage. I really wanted that house. Right. And I, even though I overpaid, I was really happy that I did because it was my lifestyle. I wanted that house. I didn't. So the fear of loss, she said she was going to put it on the market next week. Fear of loss kicked in and I just paid. And I remember that feeling and thinking, wow, how can I create this feeling in other people and in, in, in buyers for my sellers? And that's when Exclusive Sneak Preview Division was born. It's not that we're trying to sell it ourselves. It's not that it's a pocket listing and we're not telling anybody. It's it's just a sneak preview before it comes on. With the transparency of the market and everybody knowing everything, and they want to know about things before they hit the market. The buyer's agents feel like they're losing their value because of the transparency of the market. And you figure, you know, you're, you're, um, 
their buyers are finding about out about the properties at the same time we are. Mm-hmm. So by the time we get in touch with them, they've already heard about it. I don't know how many times we've heard, oh, my agent uh, didn't even find my house. I found it myself online. And so the agents, the buyer's agents feel they're losing their value and they're, they're not able to provide the information quick enough. So this ESP is really, although not in the beginning, in the beginning, the brokers really, uh, you know, didn't love it. They thought it was just a ploy. They thought it was just me trying to, oh, another one of Julie's creative, uh, you know, creative options. But then they really saw what the value that it brings because now they're watching ESP. It's it, they're getting their commissions. It's, we're not keeping both sides. And even if I say, even if I find a buyer, we always go live on MLS. We always make sure that the seller gets full exposure, and we explain, you know, fear of loss can create um, somebody to pay a premium before it comes live. When we do go live, this is. This is kind of telling about how we do things. Let's say we had a, a property for $800,000 um, on ESP, and we got an offer for $775 before we came live. And we went back and forth, and we ended it. And this, the seller doesn't know if they should take it because they don't want to take any money out of the pocket. They decide $790 is enough. We're going to go with $790. And then I have to explain to the other side, we're coming on the market. They're not happy about it. The buyer just said, well, I'm the whole reason I'm doing this is because oh, I want to avoid that. I explained that I have to represent the seller. It's my fiduciary responsibility to protect the seller. So the we, we do accept your offer. He understands that he risks taking money out of his pocket, but he appreciates that you're coming to the table. We're signing the binder. We're putting it on MLS. We are explaining to the other buyers that they will be backup offers. So we are only accepting backup offers. Now this does this does a lot strategically for my seller because when inspections come, they don't know if we have a backup offer or not. That's right. And in, instead of putting it on for 790, which most most agents would do, because they want their list to sale price ratio to be as high as possible, so they would put it on for 790. Sometimes we even go higher, 810, 820, because if we do get a backup offer and we accepted an offer so quickly chances are good we would have accepted full price, right? Or we wouldn't have taken it that quickly. So our backup offers are often higher than our ESP accepted offers because they know they have to beat that offer in front of them. When inspection comes and they always ask for something, we have the option. So if if they're afraid that they're gonna lose it, they're not gonna ask for anything. If they, if they do need to ask for things because they're major, we have the option. Um, so, we can either stick with them and say, we're not gonna do anything. We can stick with and keep it as is. We can stick with them and say, listen, we appreciate the offer that you brought in, but we got an offer for 20,000 more. And since you've opened the door renegotiating, we're gonna let you match that offer if you wanna keep this house. But once they start renegotiating, the, the ball is back in our court and we can go back and ask for more money. Or we can just say, thanks for playing, we're going with our higher offer. So it really affords my client much more options in a very strategic but ethical and honorable way. Right, and with the and with the way the market is right now, especially inventory issues and all that you know stuff going on, this is such a, a great protection. I mean, I I think this is a great strategy. ESPdivision.com, and you don't mind people going and checking that out, do you? No, no. I I mean it's it's. I think it's it's such a good tool for buy. So on on the site it says the benefits to the buyers, the sellers, and the agents. The benefits to the buyers is everybody wants to know about things before they hit the market. That's that's a no-brainer. Um, the benefits to the seller is if they're not quite ready to put their house on the market because they're still looking. That's another thing. You go to an open house right, and they're yeah. and they're um, they're not sure if they want to. Buy. They they want to find a house before they sell. So if they um, that there's a clog in that system because if they find a house before they sell, most companies most sellers don't want to take a Hubbard anymore or they just a Hubbard clause. So now they're in a sticky situation. They don't know. They're afraid to to sell before they buy because so this gives them the opportunity to really try out the market, 
test the market, get real feedback from real buyers. It's kind of, we call it going off Broadway before we go on Broadway. And, and, and then we launch, plus we'll get real feedback from agents and buyers. And any of the feedback we get, we can take care of it. If we hear enough times paint that dining room red into a softer color, it really gets the seller to pay attention to the things that they need to do. Got it. You are the master of the art of negotiation, and I can hear it in your in your discussions right here. Um, you know, one of the things that you've made uh, a, a great name for yourself across the country, by the way, is the fact that you know you're a great negotiator. So let's talk about that. Let's get into that. First, I want to talk about before you get into the art of the negotiation. I want to figure out how you market that. I mean, how, what's your approach, and how do you present that? as part of why people would choose you and your team to, to get their real estate dust? Um, it depends on how we're approaching it. Um, you know, we have little videos about the strengths of, of negotiating. It's not really taught in the industry, the art of negotiation. Um, so we have little snippet videos of, you know, questions to ask your realtor. Uh, do they have a strategy for negotiation? Which obviously implies that we do. We don't have to get too deep into that. They just are like, oh, wow, I guess they do know what they're doing if they're willing to talk about negotiation. Right. Um, we have, um, you know, blogs about the importance of negotiation. I do a lot of uh, I do a lot of writing. I think editorial is so important. I think a lot of agents miss the mark with PR. Um, paid advertising is much less effective than editorial. So, yeah. you know, becoming relevant and talking about subjects like negotiation is picked up by the papers and by blogs and you know um, so I've gotten a lot of press that way but a lot of it is face to face because you can get across pretty quickly that you're a good negotiator um, in, a, in a subtle way uh, when you're in front of buyers and sellers and when you're at a marketing presentation it's one of the it's I say you know one of my strengths is, is negotiating and we often have to get very creative in this market and creative negotiation Creative negotiating is a topic I could talk about for two hours with my with my team. So that's amazing. So well, you, you kind of broke the whole thing down for us. But I mean, the, the, the bottom line is is you know you're gonna you're gonna go back for your client, but you have some pretty proven approaches and strategies, right? To to be able to to represent your client and and win on most I'd like to say every deal, but win on most deals. So what are some of those things that if I'm an agent and I want to get to your level, what, what are some of the things that I need to, to really focus in on when it comes to the, to the area of negotiation? Um, I would say listen and educate yourself on what the, who your opponent, if you want to call it an opponent, who you're negotiating with. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just want a bidding war. There are four offers. Um, I took the time to really research the seller. I was, I was representing the buyer, took the time to really research the seller um, and really communicate with the agent. Um, relationships with other agents is so important um, and being, being um, considered, um, I don't want to say easy to work with, but, but you know, friendly and there's just a lot of agents that are just hard to work with. Like they're fighting too hard. We're all trying to get to the solution. We're all trying to protect our client. We're not trying to fight about it. We're all trying to do what's best for our client, and we can do that in a very, um, in a very positive way. So, this particular this is just an example, but this particular buyer, uh, this particular seller, I mean, was buying a house and um, wanted to close at a certain a certain day, but was buying the house two weeks earlier. So I suggested to my client that we close, we close two weeks prior to the date he wanted to move out and let him occupy the property and just pay taxes and insurance. And that would give him the comfort of having two weeks to move, being able to use the money instead of buying the house and, and then have the two weeks to move. And then he's carrying two houses for two weeks. Right. It, is, it is what got us the house. We would not. We weren't even the highest number, but we were willing to do that. And and those kinds of little, and, and they're not tricks of the trade. They're, you know, educating yourself so that you can best represent your consumer. So negotiation is more about just like in sports. If you know your competition, 
and, and what they are like, you're better, right? You, you can beat them. But if you, if you know um, the needs of the people you're trying to, to win with, then you're, it's, it's all about educating yourself um, so that the approach you take, you know, it's, it baffles me when I have a multiple offer situation coming on one of my listings that the other agent doesn't ask me questions like, does your seller have a preference on closing date? Is there anything that your seller would appreciate? Does he want to leave everything there and we'll dump it for him? Does he want to leave the basement full? Those are things that mean, that cost nothing but mean so much. So, um, and, and negotiating numbers, the same thing. When you're negotiating, uh, you know, for for both both sides is all I'm saying. That, that finding out when the when you're uh, when you're representing a seller, and we've got multiple offers, you have to explain that not always the highest is the best, and you explain. And and what I like to do, so many people will go to highest and best. It's mm -hmm. we've got multiple offers, we go to highest and best. And you have to explain you don't always want to go to highest and best. I don't. I don't. I like to work with one, leverage them, you know, pick the one that's the best, work with it, try to get it to where you want it to be. And if you can't, and you're leveraging the other ones, and if you can't, then you move on to the next one. But to go to highest and best often creates animosity, and people don't want to deal with it. And then if they do win, they wonder why they won, and they think they overpaid, and they have buyer's remorse. So there's so many different ways that are not being taught that I that I cringe when I see people doing the things that are so easy to avoid. Um, also, if you do go to highest and best, you have to remember that the backup offer is the most important person in the room. Yes. The winning offer is extremely happy. They're so pumped that they won, but sometimes they feel, wow, I won. Like I said, wow, I won. Maybe I overpaid. So. So the agent and the, the losing buyer is the one you have to spend a lot of time on. We're so grateful for your offer. Um, the other one just, you know, that's when you have to really take, take good care of the backup offer because often you have to go there. So and, Yeah, and so, you know, the, the thing about it, and I've talked to so many of my partner agents who have told me that, you know, highest and best is, to your point, is not always big. But there's a story, right, between every buyer, about every buyer. There's a situation, there's a story. I love this. Listen, educate yourself, know the other side and all the parties on the other side, not only just the agent, but the buyers or the sellers. Don't be combative. And I love this is that the highest and best is not always the best, but the backup offer is. <laughs> That's what I picked up from your point. And I love that. That's a great, quick Really great way to break that down, right? Thanks. Yeah, it's uh, it works. It's been working for me so far. There you go. All right, I got to get into this. I can't ignore this anymore. And by the way, we've got some questions coming in, and we'll get to those questions coming up in just a minute here. But so Alan Dalton is the former CEO of Realtor.com, and I found this little snippet, and I'm just going to read it, okay? As the former CEO of Realtor.com, I had the opportunity to assess the various levels of real estate professionalism throughout the entire industry. Equipped with this inside information, and he put that in quote, it's telling that when in need of a realtor representation upon moving to Connecticut, there was only truly one choice, Julie Vanderblue. My family and I happily discovered why so many in the know recommended Julie to us. Her deep knowledge of the various Connecticut communities and their nuances was remarkable. Simply put, there's no substitute for experience, knowledge, and skill. And this is the former CEO of Realtor.com. All right, that's amazing. So tell me about that. Well, um, that's a blessing for me because I met Alan originally at, I it was either an Inman or NAR convention. Um, he was speaking and I was overwhelmed with, wow, brilliance. He's a, he's brilliant, like just a brilliant. And I've known him now for 15 years, 12, 12 years or so. And, um, and I went up to him and talked to him and I said, if you have an hour between, and I, I said, I'm speaking on teams I, in another room, I'd love your opinion. Um, and we, he came in to, to watch my speech and he gave me some, you know, he critiqued me and he wasn't, he wasn't fluffy. You know, he told me what I did wrong and, 
you know, if I had thin skin, I probably would have, you know, my back would have bristled and, you know, but I loved the, I love constructive criticism. And I think that's what he appreciated about me that I'm a sponge and I love to learn and I love to learn from others. And that's why I'm so open with sharing ideas is because I, I love learning. Um, so I, I just started working with Alan and I was, um, he had, he was thinking of coming to Connecticut and I was, I was able to show, and I, I almost didn't want him to find a house because I love driving him around and asking him questions. And we became, we became really good friends. He actually now consults for our company, Rick, ironically, Rick Higgins and he were, um, works together in New Jersey when, uh, back in the day he was, uh, he ran, he started so many, uh, he, he created, um, marketing platforms for better homes and gardens for, he was the president of, uh, Murphy real estate and for 30 offices. So he's worn every shoe, uh, which why I think is he was so successful at realtor.com as well. He turned it from being upside down to the number one real estate uh, website in the world. So, you know, I hear his accolades and, you know, uh, my team actually calls them Alanisms because a lot of what comes out of my mouth, I learned from Alan. And, um, and, and so I'm, I'm grateful that he sees me uh, so highly. So here's another one that I love, and I think this one is is uh, incredibly uh, uh, important in the fact that it says uh, basically points out what we've been talking about in this in our time together today. So this is a uh, testimonial that I read that said Julie and her team were by far the most helpful and knowledgeable uh, people we've ever worked with. We were moving from California. We had no idea in which ta uh, the, which town we wanted to move into only that I had to commute to New York. And I knew I didn't want to live in New York, I want to live in Connecticut, but I didn't know anything about the place. The detailed town videos they provided, as well as their specialty, uh, helped us narrow it down, and we currently have an accepted offer. I cannot wait to close, and moving, and moving into beautiful Fairfield County, which by the way, I knew nothing about until I started searching for a home with Julie, so thank you. So this is exactly what you're talking about, right? Here's a person that's in California, and you're kind of basically being their tour guide on all things New York and Connecticut. Yeah, and and that you know that talks about like our team is kind of unique. And if someone's thinking of joining a team or starting a team, there's a lot of different team concepts out there. Um, many of them, most of them, in my opinion, are just businesses within businesses. They're small brokerages within a big brokerage. And um, it's just all about splits. With our team, it's truly a synergistic team because if you're truly consumer centric and educating the consumer, how can I educate a consumer on a town I don't really, really know? And you hear all the time agents, oh, I'll go anywhere. I hear it so much, I'll go anywhere. And I was like, well, that's great, but are you truly able to educate the consumer if, if you don't understand that town? And right. our team has, we have, we have agents from Greenwich, Stanford, McCain, and Norwalk, Westport, Fairfield, Bridge. So, so I know when we do relocation and someone's coming into town, they start with me. I assess what they want to do. I'll show them certain areas and then I'll say, you know, so they don't have to bop around to other agents to, to really get a full um, education. Um, but they also are not being educated by one agent who doesn't understand the nuances of every, I mean, there are nuances of neighborhoods, no less towns. So it's really important. Um, I think again, when it comes to community and to, to the, the points that you just made with the testimonial is putting the client ahead of your own financial gain. And that is not common, unfortunately, in this industry. I think it's hopefully changing. Um, but it's, it's, you know, we don't make money until a house sells and we do a lot of work. So I can see why, why you're tempted to take clients out that you really should be sharing at least or, or partnering up with someone or, and in our team, we don't have to, we don't even have to share the client. We're just going to tap into the knowledge of our team because we're all working together. And again, the word synergistic is the, is the word of the day for us because it's not about what's in it for me. I've let the people that I've let go from this team. One was my top producing agent I've ever had. And I let her go because she was a what's in it for me person. And it just one person like that can spoil 
the entire feeling of a team. And once trust is lost, it, 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 everything changes. So really working with people that you trust and um, so that you can, again, bring the best to your client. Because this is, all we have is our reputation. And really, I mean, as much as I love money to, for, you know, for, to me it's green paper. And I don't love money, but as much as I love the things that money buys, it's, it's very, very low on the totem pole of importance. And it will come when you're doing the right things and when, the, when it's about the relationships versus the transactions. And sharing the wealth versus keeping it all for yourself is, um, is really what I think has made us rise to the top so quickly. You know, there's a quote, and I can't remember it exactly word for word, but my uh, one of the guys that uh, I first got in the business uh, many, many years ago uh, taught me. He goes, it was something to the back to, uh, if you chase the money, you will be poor, but if you chase the relationship, the rewards will be found. There's something along that. I can't remember the exact quote, but that's exactly what you're talking about. Yep. What you're chasing is you're chasing the, uh, the ability to be able to be substantive in this career. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. All right. We got a ton of questions coming in here. So I'm going to start with one from Denver, Colorado. Um, I'm an agent with a classic marketing problem. I need to up my visibility to improve sales, but in order to get more business, I have to spend more money. Boy, that's a classic. So what do you suggest on I should be spending my money on? Okay. Um, I think if you have, so there's a lot of different ways as far as how you spend your money. You know, the the biggest success target marketing we have is is honestly Facebook boosting and social media. You know, it's important to diversify, um, but it depends on if if you have a lot of listings. Like you won't see me on a billboard. I I, I won't spend my money on self promotion that way. The self promotion, but you have to brand. So there's which way you go. So every dollar we spend has to do with our sellers. So we're promoting an event, let's say. So we're getting the promotion, but we're promoting an event um, for the Greenfield Hill Tour, which is all about the properties. So in my opinion, if you're spending money, you need to be spending it on promoting your properties so that your money is well spent, but you also have to do it in, a, in diverse ways. I mean, we do everything, so mailers is, is, is important. Um, even though, you know, I still go like this when I think of mailers because I just see people throwing them out. But consistency, if you think you're going to do a mailer and you're going to get it, get any response because you sent three, it has to be, you have to just have a strategic approach no matter what it is and then follow through with it. So you could, we do something called with homesin.com right now. Homesin is um, a platform all about the community. I think community, if you really want to spend money, spend it. Spend it community uh, in community relationships. So pick your town, and, and Homes In is a is a fabulous platform. Um, and the reason I, I I love this platform is because if you post something on Homes In and then boost it, it's coming from something else. It's not coming from me. So if I'm posting, wow, we're the best, or look at this property, it's another realtor talking about how great their um, properties are. If Homes In boosts it, and you can really target, it's amazing. I highly recommend that you find a social media guru and really learn about it because you can target now that the, compared to when I got into this industry, it's amazing. You can spend $20 and really target um, an area on anything from an open house. You should, you should have a, a serious budget and I would highly recommend social media to start with. I would recommend if you're marketing, you know, especially in the community, I'm the, I'm the chamber, I'm on the board. Um, I have enough, I have more time on my hands. I have no time on my hands, but I'm on the board of the chamber of commerce in my town. Like the last thing I want to do is get up at six o'clock and go to a chamber meeting, but right. it's really important to do those things. And then when you're at an event and you can, you can promote that event, so promoting events and not just properties, promoting that you're engaged in the community. We have something called Neighborhood Network where we take, as I was saying, take little videos of, um, of the businesses 
We want to support our businesses. But remember, these business owners have lives, have families, need to move. So people tend to support those that support them. So we create relationships. And so the marketing part of it, um, I believe, is, is starting from not just your listings and your buyers, but really promoting that you're supporting the community that you sell. Absolutely. And there's a lot of ways to do that, too, with, you know, you know, print advertising um, in the newspaper, you know, a lot of people don't believe in print and, I, and I, I, I don't love it, but when you're branding, it's an important part of letting the people see you, but you have to be consistent. And we usually... I we really struggle with newspaper because, you know, it just, um, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of agents that I talk to that say, you know, we, we're still doing it. Um, we're probably not getting much of a, a return on our investment on it, but we are getting a return, right? So, you know, yeah. you, you got to look at the ROI there. Yeah, it's low on the totem pole, but at the same time, if you're if you're branding in the same place, and we don't pay for our own advertising anyway, we we get our partners to do it. So we might we might have a um, we had a Greenfield we had a Greenfield Hill tour this past uh, this past we had the Dogwood Festival. So we had a full page ad in the paper, and I had all the local businesses pay a hundred bucks each or a couple hundred bucks each to, and we really. We gave out information at our open houses. We had them highlighted in the ad. It supported that we believed in this in our in Greenfield Hill and in the town. They to them, 200 bucks was nothing, and they got tremendous exposure. Right. So, you know, I wouldn't suggest paying a 500 bucks a month for a print ad, but if you can get creative, then those people really appreciate it, and and it shows to the public that you're creative, and it's not just another real estate ad. I mean, people are getting sick of those full pages with. 12, 12 houses in them. So you right. got to get, and also providing relevant information in whatever you do. Whatever message you want to get across should be relevant, fun, or educational. Well, relevance and educational is similar, but you know the difference. Yeah. Um, so it's it's being careful with the message that you're, that you're um, sending and then choosing I mean, I could talk for a couple hours about, about different strategies, but I would say really choose the strategy that you're going to approach and don't deviate and don't be, I can get into this. Oh, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's do this. Let's do this. But you're, you're going to get nowhere. So just stay focused. So, you know, one of the things that's really important to note is that, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to invest your money wisely, you know, uh, everybody thought, well, we should do email, email, email. It's free. Just keep doing email. Well, email has gotten to the point where you can't beat the spam. You can't beat it. You know, emails become almost ineffective now. Right. So you have to do things like the mailers, even though, you know, a large portion of them get thrown away, a large portion of them get, you know, get um, some uh, effectiveness. Handwritten notes, you know, those are highly effective. I believe that if you don't have a social media presence, you don't exist. So you have some approaches with social media, and we've got a questions in the box. You mentioned Facebook Live. I think this is a great approach. So what is your Facebook Live approach? How do you use it? When do you use it? You know, what, what do you say when you do it? Um, we use it. All, I'm, I'm teaching my team to use it more. Nobody likes to be in front of the camera or, uh, you know, you're always worried about what you're looking like and, and it's, um, but nobody cares really. So, so it's, you know, we do everything from when I do an open house. Hey guy, and very always light. Hey guys, I'm here today. Just want to give you a sneak peek of the property before you come to see it. And I'll show them some of the highlights and I'll say, Oh, you can't see the rest until you get here. Can't wait to see you. You know, so, you know, making it a little more fun. We do live video um, at a community event to, to, to do the lifestyle. Hey, everybody, you know, it's being out there and showing that you're not just, it's also embracing your own personality and, and showing people who you are because people like to work with people that they like. That's like the number one thing. People work with people they like and they trust and then they go to knowledge and skill. They first go to people that they're attracted to or they have something in common with. So I, everybody should be doing live video, and and it is. And you mentioned the handwritten notes. Just as an aside, if you're not writing three handwritten notes a day, you know, start today, because it's it's really crazy when you think about 
when's the last time you got a handwritten note? And when you did, how did you feel? It went to the right to the top, right? You saw it and you grab it and you and you opened it immediately. It's the only thing I open. I let my husband open everything else. <laughs> so so it's really uh it's and you feel good. And it yeah. could be from thanks. So we after every single open house, and, and people think I'm crazy on this, we send a handwritten note with a picture of the house that we were, that they went to on the on the card that just says thanks for coming. We always write a little something on the back of their sign-in sheet um, about them. Oh, I hope Bobby had fun at the soccer game. You know, so it's a personal note, and I can't tell you how effective that has been. It's, and and it can be anything when you go to dinner. Call, write a letter, write a little note to the restaurateur and say, hey, just wanted to say how much I enjoyed our meal. Yeah. And you don't put your, I, I don't put my card in every single one. Um, sometimes I will after the open house because they obviously need to get in touch with me. But for the most part, it can't feel like a uh, sales pitch. So just on a side note, when I heard handwritten notes, it's such a big part of what we do. I, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, we always talk about all these innovative ways to do marketing, right? We always talk about all we have to do all this, all this, you know, technology stuff. I love that approach, you know, because if you talk to somebody in an open house and Jimmy, he's got to go to a soccer game, so mommy's got to take him and go, and you write a handwritten note, hope Jimmy had a great soccer game, they know that you connected, right? And then I just used to write my name and a phone number right below it and, you know, put the thing and put a stamp on it. Don't run it through the postage machine. Put a stamp on it and press it. I, I, Julie, this is one of the greatest things ever, and it, it may be old school as hell, but I don't care. It works. Yeah. <laughs> And open houses is another, you know, open houses is a, is our retail store. We're, we're inviting people into our store. And I urge any agent to take a Sunday and go to open houses and learn what not to do. Because the majority of agents do not do an open house effectively. Um, if anything, they, they turn people off. Mm -hmm. And we have, a, we have an approach that, that you know, I have a lot of agents and a lot of mouths to feed, and they can feed themselves if they're doing open houses appropriately. And a lot of people, a lot of people are represented. So it's not like you're getting all these new buyers every time you do it. But if the first thing you ask when someone walks into the door is to sign in or to, are you represented? Then you should get out of the industry or at least learn I agree. how to do it right. Because you shouldn't ask. I don't ask them to sign. I, when they come in, I say, thank you so much for coming. Um, I tell them a few things about the house. Before you get started, I want to prove to them that I have knowledge that a few things that won't be um, that won't be obvious before you go on your tour. Make sure you, you go to the basement because it's got really high ceilings and it's easily finished. The third floor is finished, um, so don't miss that. And the uh, lower, I mean, the backyard has plenty of room for a pool. These are things, the three things that they might ask. Right. Because, and then you're still walking with them, but if someone comes in, you've already earned credibility that you're not just going to follow them around and point out the Bosch dishwasher and the Viking stove. So, oh. so then before I say, listen, I'll walk around with you, make yourselves at home. Um, but before you go, I really need for you, not, I don't, not I really need you, what I'd, I'd really love for you to sign in. Um, it's important to me, and I'd love to get a little feedback before you go, so it's important that we have a quick chat before you go. They've made a commitment to me before they walk through the house. And then the whole strategy of getting them to sign in, I, honestly, that could be a webinar in itself, but it's, uh, it's so important to, to just um, earn their trust right away instead of making it about you. And, and it's, it's rare. Go, and, go to an open house and you'll see what I mean. That's right. And, you know, uh, before we wrap up here, Julie, we're pushing the time envelope because you and I could keep talking for another couple hours. I really think that. But my job in the open houses, what I used to do, my job was I had to go by the grocery store and buy those little rolls of cookie dough. And I had to cut them up and put them in the oven of the house so people would smell cookies when they walked in the door, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. All those little, those, those, and little goodie bags or tray. I mean, there's so we have these little coloring books that we give to the kids that say "Draw my dream home," so they have something to go home with. There's we used to give balloons, but it became a lot. You know, you never know with with like anyway. But we do coloring books now. So a lot of little things at the open house. Right. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we, we are at the end of our time frame, but and we have a ton of questions. So we were gonna we'll get you the answers to these questions, we promise. Uh, Julie's gonna we're gonna have a conversation offline via email, I'm sure, on some of these questions because I know you want to get uh, so much more of this information. But you know, if you go to her website, look at her website. It's very well done. It's very, it's very consumer friendly. Uh, I want to again uh, remember have you look at the ESPDivision.com and uh, just kind of check out those things. And uh, thanks so much. Thanks to the Higgins Group uh, and, and your team for letting us have you for for this time. Uh, I'm I'm so excited about what you taught us today. It's, you're right. You and I could spend another couple hours talking, but thank you so much, Julie. Oh, it's been an honor and a privilege to be here. I'm really grateful for the time, and uh, thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining, everybody. Two weeks, we'll be back. We've got some pretty big guests. If you want, want to keep checking in with Gateless, check your email. We'll stay in touch with you. You stay in touch with us. On behalf of Julie, I'm Dave Lopshire for the Guaranteed Great Companies. Thanks for joining, everybody. Have a great day.